Tiso has been on a roll for a while, especially due to the release of the PRX line in multiple variations that have been absolute crowd pleasers for those that wanted a well-specced, affordable, integrated bracelet offering. This time around, it's something from their 70s catalog again. A little more niche, but still really cool. It's the Tissot Sidral. My first thought when I put on this watch was, this is how the Moon's watch could have been even better. My second thought was, everybody's going to love it. Not many are going to buy it. For $995, you get yourself a cushion case watch in a 41 millimeter diameter with a 46.5 millimeter lug to lug without actual visible lugs. 14.5 millimeter thickness and 20 millimeter lug width. The case itself is forged carbon with elements of stainless steel. The watch is that textured, almost marbled matte black that is so recognizably carbon. The watch comes in three color options, red, yellow, and blue. Inside the watch, you get the Powermatic 80 movement with 80 hours of power reserve, strong antique magnetic performance, and it's also got 300 meters of water resistance. The bracelet is a perforated rubber strap in the red, yellow, or blue colors that match the dial color detailing. Objectively, this is likely the worst specced part of the watch. It's not a steel bracelet or leather, but a reasonably high quality rubber strap. The thing I don't like about it is the closing mechanism, which is this whole plug system where each strap end is fixed to the other strap. It's a lot like the standard rubber strap locking system that you get on an Apple watch, with the difference being that the end piece, unlike the Apple, doesn't sit against the skin but rather in the outside. That's a positive. It's soft, it's pliable, it feels like good quality. I just think it's a little bit over-engineered and a little bit on the thick side. Personally, I would have preferred traditional buckles and keepers, but that's just me. This, however, is probably the only really negative thing I have to say about this watch. This is a regatta timer watch. I don't know and don't care how it works. I think it looks cool. I doubt it'll ever actually be used as a regatta timer, but I find it refreshing to have a different dial configuration than your standard time only, dive bezel, or chronograph with three sub-registers. It also adds to the quirkiness and funness of the watch, which is the whole point of this watch. When I hear about some watchmaker releasing a carbon case, my mind instantly goes toward watches that are meant to come across as serious, extreme, toolish. My mind sends me images of butch watches, like, you know, a Panerai Carbotech or an IWC big pilot carbon or a Zenith Defy classic carbon. More often than not, these watches are linked with motorsports like Formula One or street racing or high-end sports car brands. And this brings me to the Sidral. Yes, it's a great regatta timer. So yes, that's sports and yachts and racing, but it's not marketed as that at all, really. It's marketed as fun, summery, chill, carefree. And I think that's so refreshing. There's no attempt to turn this into some butch ultra manly man's watch for men who do manly things. On the surface, you have three black case watches. The, the yellow and the red are pure black, where the blue one has elements of blue melted or forged into the carbon. But the most important thing here is that Tissot have actually succeeded in making a black watch that doesn't look like one of those aggressive blacked out sports watches. And it comes down to the colors. Black isn't the dominant color. The steel ring below the bezel, the mic markers on the bezel, and the colored accents on the dial all provide much more visual contrast than you usually see on blacked out watches. The center ring in yellow, red, or blue is super pronounced, and together with those ultra colorful straps in strong primary colors, you've got something that is quintessentially relaxed, bold, and summery. The T-shaped second hands is also a cool touch, again adding some quirky visual variety and again emphasizing the laissez-faire vibe of this watch. The main downside to the case, if there is one, is the 14.5 millimeters of thickness. Because you don't have lugs that are in effect swooping down towards your wrist, it feels a bit tall, which is probably a bigger problem for smaller wrists than the actual lug-to-lug -lug would suggest. Apart from that, with the specific case and lug design in mind, it wears reasonably well. The case itself, though, isn't going to be to everybody's tastes. Cushion cases wear weirdly simply because we're used to wearing normal cases with rounded center bodies and lugs protruding from them. It kind of reminds me about Bernays sauce. Now, in the country where I am, for many years, about 20 years back, there was like this pre-made Bernays that you could buy and you just added, I think, milk and then it turned into Bernays. Suddenly, people were starting to get introduced to real Bernays made the real way. And when people tasted it, it was like, this tastes wrong. This doesn't taste like Bernays. Because their mind had been linked with 
this milk addition powdered product. So real Bernays was not Bernays to them. And I think that mental hurdle is the same when you're talking about these kind of cushion cases. We're just so conditioned as to what a watch should look like. Then we see a weird case like this, we put it on our wrists and it's just weird. So if it's a Sub or a Seamaster or a Christopher Ward, this case is nothing like that. And with the additional lack of visible lugs, it doesn't even look like a wire lugged radiomere, simply because it's so different from what we're used to. A lot of people would put it on their wrist and think it looks weird and just put it back in the display case, even though I think they shouldn't. Some people will never get over that feeling. Not me, however. For me, the effect was similar to the one when I wore a Doxa 300D for the first time. Leave it on the wrist for a while and you start to appreciate how everything is about the dial. It also wears reasonably small for the same reason, but not as small as a 46-ish millimeter lug to lug would suggest. Because of those hooded lugs, it overall will feel bigger on the wrist because there's no air between the lugs and there's also no curvature to those same lugs. Part of the strap is essentially under the case, which means the overhang isn't going to be as pronounced. You just have to adjust your mindset to the specific case aesthetic that it is. It's like a car door that has gullwing doors or doors that open backwards. It feels wrong, but it actually contributes to a super cool look. And if you can live with that not insubstantial height, you're actually getting a very eye-catching and cool design, which really hits the mark in terms of what they were actually aiming for. We're going to talk a little bit about the Moon Swatch in the context of the Sideral. There's a point here about the Sideral and its pricing, so stay with me. Why did people buy the Moon Swatch in the Millions? Well, a lot of reasons. It's a replica of the Moon Watch. It's cheap. People got caught up in the hype. All of the above, for sure. The Sideral isn't trying to be a cheaper version of some ultra iconic watch, so it doesn't have that. But it does have one thing in common with the Moon Swatch. It's a fun watch. This Tissot got me thinking. For a teeny tiny bit more, the Moon Swatch could have been so much better. The Sideral is $995, which is about $350 more than the PRX. But the PRX Quartz is only $395. The difference between the two PRXs is the movement, which is $250. So let's shave off $250 off of the Sideral and put it in a Quartz movement. That puts the Sideral at around $750. That's $500 more than a Moon Swatch, but you get steel, carbon case, 300 meters of water resistance. Now let's shave off the display case back, roll back the water resistance from 300 to, you know, a respectable 200 or even 100. And I think you could realistically be selling the Sideral from somewhere around $650. That's $400 more than the Moon Swatch. Now, turn that calculation on its head. What kind of a Moon Swatch could you get for $400 more? The distance between a current Moon Swatch and a Quartz Sideral with slightly lower specs would be $400. I understand that making a Moon Swatch that's too good would be a bad proposition for Omega. But imagine getting those specs, 100 meters of water resistance, carbon and steel in a Moon Swatch. That would be insane. But to me, it spotlights how easy it would have been for Swatch to make something just a little bit more solid than the watch we got. It's never going to happen, but there's potential there. Which brings me back to the Sideral. I think a lot of people out there have the reaction that the Sidera looks cool, is fun, but they'll ultimately never buy it. To them, it's too much of a novelty, too far away from the norm, the standard, the staple, the easily accessible, the easily stylable dive watch or chrono or integrated sports bracelet watch, especially at $995. Where some people thought that the Moon Watch was a bit too cheap, I think some people are going to feel that the Sideral is a bit too expensive. So many people will speak well of the Sideral, but won't buy it at that price point. For people looking for a fun watch, depending of course on their financial standing, they will not likely want to spend $1,000 on something that fills a niche similar to a Moon's watch. It's fun, but it's not an everyday, every season, go anywhere, do anything watch. This is summer and beach and chill and fun. Those people would more likely be willing to stretch for a $600 or $800 quartz Sideral. I'm one of those people. I would gladly go for the Sideral if it was a little bit cheaper because it's not something I'm going to wear often. It's not the price to spec ratio. I think it's totally fair price. It's just too much for a fun watch. The Sideral to me fills a space that an affordable G-Shock also fills, but it's priced like a full steel GMW 5000 G-Shock. A full steel GMW 5000 is super cool, but it's just a bigger commitment than a 5610 or a DWH 5600 or a steel bezel Casio on rubber. Putting this watch at this price is not unreasonable in any way for what you're getting, but 
it's just at the high end of what I think a lot of people that want a fun watch are willing to pay for something that is not going to be their year-round daily wearer, which leaves a smaller group of people who really appreciate this more special type of design. This is not your run-of-the-mill, easily accessible dive watch or integrated bracelet watch. Those people that want a bit more uniqueness, a bit more pizzazz and personality in a watch that they'll wear as often as they go anywhere, do anything, watch with a twist. They'll love it. For the same reason, I don't believe it's going to be the same kind of smash hit as the PRX, simply because of its very special design. But for those people that like this kind of thing, they're getting a lot of watch for their money for sure. You get actual high-end specs like anti-magnetic, 300 meters of water resistance, steel, forged carbon, you name it. You get a thoroughly fun summary watch that will definitely stand out in a crowd in a good way. And if that's your thing, then go for it because it's really, really cool. At least that's what I think. What do you think? Like, subscribe. Cheers.